Welcome everyone to the first Claymore Racing uh, Cheltenham preview night. We're now just one week away from the greatest show on turf and this time next week the dreams will still be alive, everyone will still be excited. Today I'm joined by Mr Peter Scudamore, a man that needs no introduction with 13 festival victories and a man who trained his best pal to win back-to-back -back Ultimas. Mr Michael Scudamore, a trained next sensation to win as a 16-1 to outsider making it every bit more special when it was ridden by his brother, Tom Scudamore, and Ella McNeil, racing manager for the McNeil family and the national hunt manager for Chelsea Thoroughbreds. Ella also presents for Race Day TV. Why don't we start with, with everyone's favourite Cheltenham memory? Scoo? With my favourite son, really. Um, Michael Scudamore sat next to me, but Corrick Ram was my favourite son, so I'll, I'll have uh, <laughs> Corrick winning. Uh, a second Ultima was just an unbelievable moment, but uh, very close next sensation. I stood in the stands when Michael and Tom won with next sensation. That was an unbelievable moment. But I suppose you didn't want a long answer, we're going to get one. But, um, you know, it goes back for so many years. The Cheltenham has meant so much to me. My dad won the Gold Cup in 57 on a horse called Linwell. So ever since I've been born, it's it's been there and I've watched it change in so many ways from then and I remember dad training winner of the Grand Annual actually a horse called 14 is Express 14 is Palace sorry and uh, just the pride in, in it and just competing at the top level in anything and uh, you really know you're competing at the best with the best at Cheltenham and touching these wonderful horses is magnificent Just one winner I haven't got much to, much to choose from but um, like you said, it was, it was a great day. Uh, Tom riding, it was extra special. Owned by a man called Mark Blanford, who's actually godson to my grandfather. Um, grandfather had passed away recently or, or just before that. So um, it was an extra special day. And also, it, it's funny, really, with all the talk of Constitutional Hill and how badly he worked last week. Um, Next Sensation did exactly the same thing. We took him down to Exeter to work with David Pipes, and it was embarrassing. He came in 50 lengths behind them. We couldn't work out what, why or how he worked so badly. It had been the plan all year to, to run in there. Uh, Dave Pike came up to me and said, don't worry, that's exactly what uh, Dynast did last year and then went and won the Ryanair. So um, got him home, did all the tests, nothing wrong with him, ran him and, and luckily he won. If you don't know, we um, we sold Seddon six months before he went and won the plate last year. So um, that was a bit of uh, sour grapes, that's for sure. But we, uh, we've we been trying for about 18 years, I think, to have a festival winner. And I think we've come in every place possible. We've fallen at the last, we've second, third, pulled up. So we've had it all. Um, but I think my favourite memory has to be walk on when he came second in the Triumph Hurdle in, I think it was 2009. Uh, he came second only by, I think, half a length uh, to a horse of Nicky's called Zainar, who was kind of, we rivaled with him throughout our whole career, really. Went back and forth, getting revenge on him, and then he got us back again. But yeah, he he beat us that day. And I, I took the day off school. I think I must have been nine or 10 and took the day off school. And we all went up in this big bus. It was my dad's like first proper horse. And he was at the Cheltenham Festival. And we thought this was all so easy with second favorite for the Triumph Hurdle. He then goes and comes half a length off the winner. And we think, oh, well, we, we'll try again next year. We'll, we'll, we'll get a winner next year. And however many years, 15 years later, we're still trying. But um, Walk-On was a fantastic horse for us. He was second in a top um, So he was quite a second horse, second-itis horse. He was second in a Paddy Power Gold Cup, second in a December Gold Cup. Um, so, But he was fantastic. Took us all the big days. And to start off with a horse like that, so early on in our ownership, I think, really caught our imagination and kick-started things for us, really. If we start with the Supreme, Ballyburn is odds on. He's around five to six on, four to five on. Um, followed just behind is Tully Hill at four to one, Firefox at five to one, and uh, they all fall in behind. So I don't know who wants to start. Ella, what, what are your thoughts on the the Supreme and the Bearing Bingham? Well, it's that kind of similar to what everyone else thinks. I think wherever Ballyburn turns up, I think he wins. Um, I think he's might he's mightily impressive what he's done this season, and I think wherever he goes here or the super or the Bearing Bingham, I think he will win. I think one that I 
feel may be a danger to Ballyburn, I think it's Firefox. Um, he's actually, he beat Ballyburn, I think by two and a half lengths or three lengths at Fairy House. So I know if Ballyburn kind of needed the run that day, um, but I think he beat him fair and square. And I know that he probably disappointed slightly at Nace. I don't think he potentially enjoyed the two and a half miles. I think he's a pretty pacey horse and uh, a kind of a stiff two mile Supreme will suit him down to a T. Um, so yeah, if Ballyburn doesn't run here, I'll be all over Firefox. And then I think a nice little each way shot is Teller the name for uh, Ben Pauling. I think, well, Ben's obviously on f in flying form. Um, I think he said that he's not quite had a horse at, like him yet. Uh, comparing him to horses like Willoughby Court. Um, he says he's the ultimate professional at home. He's been ultra consistent on the track. His form figures, I think, are something like one, two, one. I think he pulled up in the Tollworth, didn't he? But I think he, the excuse that day was he didn't, didn't enjoy the ground. Um, but he's been second to Django Bay that again, went on and um, ran well on the weekend at Kelso. So I think tell her the name, um, if it's not too testing, will be a nice each way chance. But um, I think Ballyburn wins if he goes here. Yeah, I'm along the exact same lines as you. I've taken Firefox and tell her the name uh, anti-post. And in the off chance that Ballyburn does go to the uh, the Bay of Bingham, I think it does come down to where Paul Townend, what pa Paul Townend wants to ride. I think it's between whether he wants to ride Tully Hill or Il Atlantique in the Bear and Bingham. And I think he's just got that little soft spot for Il, Al Il Atlantique. And I think he would quite want to get the win on him. So I do think Ballyburn's going to go. But again, I think wherever he goes, I think he wins. Uh, Michael and Peter, do you have any any opinion on, on the Supreme in the Bear and Bingham? Obviously, Ballyburn looks um, a good thing, really. Um, it's funny, I stood in... <laughs> Ronnie Bartlett, who owns him, has got Cadell with us, stood and watched him at Newbury when he got out. We were at Newbury and uh, he, he got beat that day um, in Ireland and there was long faces. He looked like coming there to win, but may have grown up. So he's, he may have needed the race, as you've already said, but um, he, he, he did, you know, he's not, not an absolute certainty. I mean, I, I suppose looking through these ho horses, uh, it's funny we're doing this talk, but when you listen to it, the, all these experts there, you know, they're just going for the favourites all the time, aren't they? I mean, they're, you know, they, they 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 will get beaten. I think there's some of them will get beaten. It's it's worth you know uh, looking outside just the favourites sometimes. And I think because of uh, the power of Willie, perhaps it there will be prices you can get each way, etc. On the horses that. Uh, um, will return you some decent odds, you know. Uh, I think you guys summed it up perfectly. I think obviously Ballyburn looks like he will take all the beating, but um, at, at a bigger price then, and, and not just going for Willie Mullins or Gordon and everything. I, I think the uh, the Ben Pauling horse has got some great form. Um, like I said, the only disappointment was on the soft ground, which I suppose we still don't know exactly what the ground will be, depending on, on how the weather goes, but it looks like it's going to start drying up a little bit now, so that that will be key as well. Um, probably end up with the sort of good to softish ground, which I can't see it being a being any sort of problem to, to, to Ben's horse. Um, in the two and a half race, again, really, I'm probably look, mainly looking at the, the, the Irish challenges, but Gilly Park's done nothing wrong. Um, so if that were to turn up here, you, you'd have to give uh, that plenty of respect as well. You know, unbeaten one round chant them, ticks plenty of boxes. Bearing Bingham, because I'm um, when I was riding, it was called something else, probably named after some product that doesn't exist anymore but um yeah again um very often in, in, in the past the, the, the best horse has actually gone on and won this race um you know horses come out of this and go on and win champion hurdles but um yeah i i'd, I'd, w I'd wait a little bit to see what what's going to run in this really before we get too excited uh, yeah so this is the three, the first race, we're talking about the first race on the Wednesday. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I think, there you go. So that was three shouts for Tell of the Name. You can get her 12, 14 and 16 to 1 across the board. Uh, it might be worth a little kind of each way chance, especially if, if Ballyburn does end up turning up uh, in the two and a half mile. A champion hurdle, Constitution Hill is now out, which leaves State Man, uh, I think, around uh, 1 to 3 on. Um, Peter and Michael, do you think anything beats State Man or do you think it, it's simply best horse wins? 
I think simply best horse wins, as boring as that sounds. Um, yeah, I, I can't see anything in, in the field to um, to challenge him too much, really, on, on all the form he's shown. Um, like I say, big shame Constitution Hill doesn't turn up. You always want to see the, the best horses on the best meetings. And, um, you know, it's sad that he's got an issue and, and not going to be there. Um, but, I mean, State Man's a very, very good horse in his, in his own right. Um, I suppose, again, just looking down the field, trying to find something else. Um, I, I, he's, whether he's good enough at this level, probably not. But I think he's, he's a good horse in his own right. He's the Kerry Lee horse. Um you know, big big friends of Richard Patrick, and he, he absolutely adores the horse. Again, he's got plenty to find, but hasn't done a lot wrong, and, and the form looks looks solid. What he's done, um, so I'd love from Richard's point of view to see him run a big race. You don't really look at the form of this because Constitution Hill's going to win, and now you're suddenly rushing around looking for horses to uh, take them on. I suppose there'd be a few people who wish it entered horses in this, but uh, I mean, after looks a pretty average race really I, I see there's lots of uh talk about irish point turning up in the race because rob core it's in the same it's in the stairs hurdle and rob core have already got the favor for that so um maybe irish point but uh i don't know it, it disappointing race really no constitution is not in it yeah i think there is a lot of kind of people on on social media basically saying that Rich Richie should run Lossy Mouth, but I, I think it's, if you don't run her in the mares and you run her here, you could miss out on, on a festival winner, so I completely understand why he's, he's going to run her in the mares. Um, Ella? It's funny though, Jay, that I'm not, I'm just asking as a point, is it anything to do with Rich Richie? I suppose he has to do what Mr. Mullins tells him to, and will he <laughs> just want, want to win everything, but I, 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 that is, it could be a, uh, an unfair remark, but I suspect you know, Willie will be just sp spreading um, his ammunition as far as he can. You know, I, when uh, we went to see Corak, I have to make, I can't get very far without mentioning Corak Rambo. We went to the wait at Aintree and uh, I spoke to Willie and, and asked, you know, he's such a lovely man to speak to. And I said, you know, how are you managing it? And all he says, well, it's just the pressure of, um, producing more winners than he did last year and um so that's why i think lost mouth will go for the mayor's race because he will spread spread his um fire powers to win as many races as he can you know that whereas we go down most of us just want one winner he's he, he, he'll want to be breaking records uh, no i think it's a real shame that i know understand why they wouldn't run lossy mouth but she's getting her claim off the boys and i think he'd get she'd give uh state man a run for his money i think she's full of class she's got a real turn of foot and i think two mile champion hurdle like i think would be right up her street but anyway i don't think she's gonna run um a bit of an outsider i'll go with a bit of a rogue one i just I have a, I think if Love Won Envoy runs, I know I know she's not been up to scratch this season so much, but obviously second in the mayor's tiny suckle last year. I think if she comes back to that form, I think she'll be a nice each way, each way prize. She's twenty five to one at the moment. And I think they're also selling her at Aintree at the golf sale. And I think, you know, if, if she comes second to State Man, that could boost her value, couldn't it? So I think if she runs and she stays at that price, I'll I'll definitely be having her each way. That's interesting. Yeah, I think I took her for, for one of the mayor's races, anti-post. Um, right, so what a lot of people will be here for, uh, we're going to run through Lucinda's runners. So, Michael and Skew, I don't know. Can I've I... got the trainer here as well, so if we say anything wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> so, you, Cameron. <laughs> I saw, I heard you, you on Nick Locks speaking about Kind of if if Apple away doesn't get into Ultima, then Giovinco can go and etc. So, is is the Ultima very much the plan for Apple away? Yeah, I think so. Don't you, Michael? It's it's um. I mean, I think when when Derek got off at at Ascot, he said she'd be fantastic in one of those big handicaps coming off a fast pace, and she's so tenacious and and robust that she'll she'll get through the runners. I I think it's the right race for her. What do you think? Yeah, she's very hard, isn't she? And, and... You know, her, her form from her win at Leicester has worked out very, very well. For whatever reason, I'm not sure she's been quite at her best the last two runs. Um, but 
she looks fantastic now. I think that the, the getting a bit of sun on her back has, has really brought her on again. Um, and yeah, I think you know she, she's a hardy mare. She's unbelievably tough. She loves her racing, um, and I think she she will step forward again from what she's done. And she does look like she's on on quite a nice mark, all things considered. Giovinco, is it still up in the air regarding the uh, the Brown Advisor and the Turners? Well, you're lucky, Cameron. You've gone. You're listening to the <clears throat> lower parts of the decision-making team. But I think Giovinco will run in the ultimate. I think uh, Apple because Apple Way won't get in. Um, they'll go. I can't, what number was Korak? I can't remember what number what Korak was to get in the ultimate. But I remember first year we didn't think he'd get in. So that. Um, so, so we'll see if she gets in. But I, I don't think she's number sixty-one. I don't think she'll he was, get in. He was eighteen when he won it. Number eighteen when he won it the first year, in twenty twenty-two. Yeah, we've got pictures of him everywhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, I, I don't think she'll get in. So I think it's just. So I think if I had my decision, I'd run Juvinka in the Ultima. I think uh, Apple Whale gets into the Kimio. I think, and she would have an outstanding chance in that because it's an easy. If she's going to win the ultimate. She will. She will be a good thing in the. And, and then we come down to a Hoy Senor running the Ryanair because it looks a very very good gold cup. He does. He's jumping much better now, and if he's going to run a big race in the gold cup, he would run. He would nearly win the Ryanair, and it, it's probably. A, you know, I don't with utmost respect to the opposition I think that um, you know it's it, it's an easier race than the Gold Cup and then we come down to Korak I, there is two ways I think with, with thinking with Korak I, I, when I'm feeling um, humble I think oh well dear Korak he's just going to um, Cheltenham like he did last year just have a run before the Grand National. Because um, I remember walking up onto the stands after with Lake Derrick and thinking, he can't win the ultimate two years running. It, you know, it's a bit so difficult to do. And he did do it. So, um, yeah, therefore, the competitive side of me says, look, you only you beat fast or slow. Fast or slow is beat. I know he's four pounds better off, but that's not going to make any difference to Corrick. Absolutely none whatsoever. He's been to Cheltenham three times. Um, you know, of course things can go wrong, but on his day, I think the reason he he's so good round Cheltenham is he jumps so well. If you watch the the Ultima last year, he's um he just keeps jumping himself into contentions. And then the commentator says, Oh, he's that last ditch, he's in the same position he was a year ago. He wasn't, he was twenty lengths closer than he was a year before. And Derek said, you know, all he was trying to do coming down the hill was make sure he hit, didn't hit the front too soon. So if you wear that hat, he's an outstanding chance. He's, he's an outstanding um, each way better than the Gold Cup. Um, so look, from a you know, I did an article with Chris Cook today and said you know the last two stables that are back to back winners at Cheltenham is us and Nicky Henderson. So it just shows you the level we're trying to perform at. Um, but you know, I think. One of those four have all got great chances. They're not social runners. They've got great chances. What do you think, my dearest? I think I better give up the day job and let you, let you just do it all. What do you think, Michael? Uh, oh, we've asked him. I, I, I think, Gio, personally, I think he'd be best in one of the novices. I think he'd have, a, again, he'd have a good chance wherever he goes. I'm not sure he's quite, um, man enough is the wrong word, but but just quite robust enough yet with his jumping and things to, for, for a big field and a handicap. Um, I hope I'm wrong if he does end up in one, but that would just be my my concern at this stage. Um, but he's a very classy horse, and his his form of stay away fade puts him gives him a great chance wherever he goes. And and we again we feel we can have him better than we had him that day. Um, and, and again, if if we, if we do, then uh, you know he, he's a very very good horse. Do you will you run Inox Allen or uh, El Elephant? I think Inox Allen might go to Kelso and. El Elefante goes to air on Friday, is it? Friday. And then hopefully that then qualifies her for the final at Newbury. So, uh, yeah, no, it, I, I doubt those two will go. I think it'll just be the four. Hopefully it'll be the four. 
I mean, aren't we lucky? We've got four <laughs> runners at Cheltenham and we're talking about them all winning. Ella, if we if we move on to the McNeil family runners, um, if if I just kind of list them out and, and you say whether they'll, whether they'll run or not and we can have a little chat about, about the ones that are going to go. So if we start with your, your bumper entries, uh, Bequa and Lieutenant Main. Yeah, they'll both go. Right. Which one do you prefer? I'm assuming Quebecqua. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? They've both run once. Uh, you don't really know what you've got, but Quebecqua was, you, yeah, you have to say he was pretty impressive on debut. I think we're winning on the bridal at Exeter um, against, and we, you don't really know what you're up against, do you? Because not many of them have gone on a run again. So, but I think Paul hel uh, holds him in the same regard as Tishan. So I think the discrepancy in price is because the way that Tom Malone spoke, spoke about Tishan saying he's the best thing he's ever seen. And fair enough, you know, he won his point to point by I think 41 length. So fair enough. But I think at home, he held him, he held, holds him in similar regard. He did a lovely piece of work. I went, I was at uh, Kempton that day, actually, that Constitution Hill did the uh, famous gallop. And um, he did a lovely piece of work with Stay Away Faye. Um, couldn't, couldn't be happier really with his progress. But again, I think there's horses with more experience in the field and it's the champion bumper and it's a, it is a bit of a lottery but you know Captain Teague did the similar same route won a, won a race extra went straight to champion bumper and was 40 to 1 and picked up third so if we can be any resemblance of Captain Teague we'd be delighted so you know I'm not saying he's going to win but I think I think I think Meg, <laughs> Meg Nichols tipped him up on the telly so we went from 33 to 16 so <laughs> I don't think you get a great prize now but I'd still have him at 16s each way <laughs> Um, you got a couple in there in the Kimur, um, Autonomous Cloud and Where It All Began. And Autonomous Cloud also has an entry in the Ultima. Uh, what's the plan for those two? Autonomous Cloud will go to the Midlands National on the Saturday. So he disappointed in the Welsh National, um, just hated the ground. It was an absolute bog. And he goes there fresh, which I think is important for him. And I think he'd have a cracking chance in that race. He loves you. Toxtra's won there a good few times before. And where it all began, he won the uh, Irish Grand National Trial. I think it's actually the Grand National Trial at um, Punchestown a couple of weeks ago. He won that by very unexpectedly, won it by 10, 15 lengths. Um, so he's been a horse that's on the improve and he goes to the Irish National um, at Easter time, all being well. And now one of the, one of the more famous ones in your colours, three card brag. Yes, three card brag. He does his last piece of work on Wednesday and we all make a decision as to whether we go to the National Hunt Chase or the Irish National with him. Um, I personally think we should go to the National Hunt Chase if we can. Um, my dad's on the other side. He thinks, you know, if you come, you win a National Hunt Chase, you get 50 grand. If you come third in an Irish National, you pick up 55 grand or something like that. So, you know, the prize money is so much better in uh, obviously to win an Irish National. But I think if it comes up softer ground and I think it's fairly open, the National Hunt Chase, you know, Corbett's Cross, I think, second favourite and we were only half a head or well, half a length behind that horse um, on both our beginners chase debuts. So um, I would love to see him in a National Hunt Chase, but who bloody knows? <laughs> now, the final two, um, we've, there's Masaccio, who's got entries in the Bering Bingham and the Albert Bartlett and the four sixes in the Boodles. Yes, um, the four sixes won't go and Masaccio will go to Aintree. Um, he will go to the, Seth, uh, yeah, the grade one, the three mile grade one, Sefton, I think it's called, isn't it? And he will run actually at Utoxta on Saturday um, after Cheltenham as a kind of a little prep race um, for that. And yeah, we also have Tiori in the Boodles who will go. Um, he's off a feather weight. We, I don't know if he'll get in. I think he will. Um, but if he gets in again, he's run three times. Um, his jumping does leave a little bit to be desired, but you never know. I think I think if he's at his best and he jumps well, he could have a nice each way chance. I think it's a big price, thirty threes to one. I think. And an overall one you're most looking forward to is it is it Quebecqua? Mm, I think if three car brag lines up in a national hunt chase, uh, I'd fancy him. But if he doesn't line up, then yeah, Quebecqua in the bumper. Perfect. So, so there you go. I hope some some people got um, some insiders on on potential chances they were looking at. Um, if we move on to the Queen Mother Champion Chase now, um, obviously uh, odds on favourite El Fabiolo 
um, in behind John Bond. And one that I quite like is Edward Stone after that last run. Um, Scoo, what do you think? John Bond, can he reverse the form or is it very much? Uh, I don't like he's jumping. Um, I, w- I wasn't, I didn't see his, my son Thomas said there was a video of him schooling at Lambourne and he wasn't jumping well. So I, I, I don't know. Um, maybe poor James Bone didn't get on with him at Cheltenham, but he just didn't jump well. Um, yeah. I like Alan King's horse, Edward Stone, I think. Um, so often you as a jockey, you ride horses and you get into this thing of they all have to be ridden, you know, ridden, hold up, ridden, hold up, and they get fed up of it. And, um, you know, they rode him differently last time. He jumped well. Um, he's clearly a very good horse in his day. And uh, I'd take a chance with Edward Stone at, at a price, yeah. Michael? <laughs> um, probably quite similarly. I, 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 you know, like I say, the video of Obviously, John Bond's in the stake at Chantham last time and the video of him in the week. Poor Mr. Henderson must hate these open days or press days because they've all been a disaster for him in the lead up to this. Um, look, he's obviously a horse with plenty of ability. Um, but I suppose you, you, you know, the dad makes a, a good argument really with, with Edward Stone. If he were to go out in front and jump well and maybe he could just get those others under a little bit of pressure. Um, you know, at the prices, you can't really be backing Al Fabiolo. He probably is the best horse in the race. And um, if all known form comes to plan, he, he should win. But like I say, if, you, if you're trying to find something else rather than just the obvious, um, perhaps you, you just hang a little hope on Edward Stone going out from the front to uh, the different tag things working. But at the same time, he could just set it up and a faster run uh, Queen Mother might even suit out of Fabio and he might be even, even more impressive. Yeah, I think just he can often have that maybe worrying jump. And I think w- when there's the potential for that and he's f- four to nine on, I think it's just it's just too tight. Um, Ella, what is is it very much El Fabiolo for you or? Yeah, I think um, uh, yeah, El Fabiolo is the one to be. Um, I think he's an absolute machine. He's got a huge engine. I think yeah, he makes few inconsistent mistakes with his jumping but I think he's good enough to get away with it um I do think it will be interesting I actually think the, the if Edward Stone goes out and puts pace on in the race I think it will actually help El Fabiolo because I think the quicker they go the better he'll be um so I do think you know Elixir Ele- Nuts could make could be a pace angle Editor G could be a pace angle so you know it could be quite exciting seeing them all go off off in front and seeing how uh El Fabiola reacts, but I, I think he's the one to beat. Uh, I personally think John Bond has no chance. I think he's one of the most overrated horses in training. Um, his, if you look at his form at Cheltenham, it's terrible. I know he beat Edward Stone the last day in the Schler, but Edward Stone hadn't had a run. And I think Kingy wouldn't have got him fully round, wound up for that race. And I honestly don't think he'll even finish in the first three. Um, but I quite fancy, I think Edward Stone's a good horse as well, but I just don't think you can warrant winning a champion chase when you've gone and beat horses like he did at Newbury. Um, I know Boot Hill fell, but I just don't, I just can't, I can't have that. And I think he's 10 and I don't, I think he went out in front for a bit of a change the first time round. I don't think you can maybe do that so much in a champion chase with horses like El Fabiola behind you. But I quite like Elixir de Nuts. Yeah. Um, I know he's a big price and he probably doesn't have the form of the other horses ahead of him in the market, but he seems to get on so well with Freddie and I've watched him win twice now. I watched him at Exeter and um, when he beat John Bond and I think he could have a nice each way chance. I'm not saying he's going to beat El Fabiolo, but um, at 25 to one, I think he's a nice each way price. Yeah, I think all, all that's got to happen is if, if something happens with El Fabiolo, I think he, he comes right, gets right in the mix. Um, I th- If we... If we move on to the Brown Advisory and the Turners. Now, Brown Advisory top in the market is obviously a uh, stay away favour for Paul Nichols. I think he's he's saying this is one of his best chances. Um, and then in behind is Monty Starr, Grey Donning, who's obviously got that form with Apple away. Um, Embassy Gardens won't go. Um, then Broadway Boy, probably the National Hunt Chase. So... Anyone got any fancies in there for for the Brown Advisory? Um, other than fact to file, obviously odds on. Uh, I'm all for stay away, Fay. I'm team team stay away, Fay. I think I, I actually don't fancy fact to file at that price. Like I, I don't think 
uh, yes, he's been very impressive, but they were two pretty average races that he's won over fences. I think if you watch him, he runs in his bumper, he does hang slightly, he jumps slightly out to his right. And I think, I don't think he's in love with Cheltenham. I know he always runs well. I think he's very talented. And I think if everything goes right for him, he will win. But I think even money, I think the last time I checked, like I just don't think you could warrant that prize. So stay away Faye for me. She's, he, I keep wanting to call her a she. She's not a she. She's a he. He uh, he's got the, the the form in the book, especially at Cheltenham, over three miles. And I think the last day when she ran against season handicappers, she looks like the he looked like the ultimate professional. Um, last year's Albert Bartlett winner, and I think yeah, Nichols is right to be excited. Does it does it not worry you that the word coming out the uh, Willie Mullins camp is that this could be their next Gold Cup horse, and and there's a lot of hype around around Fact to File. Yeah, but they thought Gallop into Champ. Well, he obviously is a Gold Cup horse, but he fell, didn't he? And, and and these things can happen. And I just think, yes, I probably think he does. He does win, but I'm not touching him at even money. So I think last time I was st- what stay away phase prize now ten, t- ten. Uh, 11, Eleven to four, five to 11 two. Oh yeah, I think that's such much much better prize than touching factor file um i think monty star will run well if he goes here um he did a very good round of jumping at punchestown i was there when he beat three card brag um i think it's a big step up in grade for him but i think he goes well he goes here fresh i think that's the key to him and i think he'll go well and for the turners uh i i do quite like gray dawning i think and i obviously dan skelton's very bullish on on the chances saying it's his best best at the festival um is there anything you fancy in the Turner's L or is it? Or is it um, I, I, again, I'm with Nichols. I think Ginny's destiny here. I mean, he's obviously stepping out of handicap company into graded company. And I think he'll have to be at his best, but I also quite like Fasil Vega. Um, I think he's been crying out for a step up in trip and he plugged away really nicely at Lupus Town the last day, um, finished off his race. Well, um, I think all his form over two miles kind of suggests that he's, calling out for a step up I mean I've heard rumours that he might even go to the Brown Vibes race so I think that would be some brave race race planning by Willie to go from two to three but you never know stranger things have happened um but yeah I think he's it's on the new course isn't it so that's quite tight I think maybe his jumping might not stand up but I think that's the only thing that I'd have against him but I think if he turns up in in the turners I'd quite I'd quite fancy him Gaelic Warriors seems to have kind of majority of the backing at nine to two does it interest you no no just an avoid I, I i don't understand why they're taking that horse to cheltenham like you, you know your horse does wants to go right-handed like you've got plenty of other chances at cheltenham you've got the bloody odds on favorite for the mares go, run go and run this this horse at a, a track that suits him <laughs> i'll say uh, that and then we'll go and win by 10 length I but know, I just even, can't. even the race manager is saying that he would run him at fairy house but I think I know. I think Rich Richie has the final say, obviously. So now it'll be interesting. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael, and Sku, Brown Advisory and Turners. Uh, I'm with you in the fact that I, I really like Grey Dawning wherever he turns up. I think he's going to um, take a lot of beating. Um, I see you've mentioned Stay Away Faye. He's done nothing wrong, and you know I keep going back to it that if if um, if you fancy him, then you can't ignore Giovinco if he turned up, and you know Stay Away's Three to one, do you think? I think it's about twenty-five to one. Um, you know, like I said, I, I'm sure we can have him better than we probably had him that day at Sandown. And um, you know, if he does come here, then that means to me he's he's, he's a very very big price um, based on that bit of form. Yeah, yeah I like um, Grey Dawning. I think his form is excellent. He was unlucky not to win at Cheltenham when he made that horrendous mistake at the second last, and he still got up and was only beaten half a length by Paul Nicholas's horse. So he's clearly the better of the two. Um, his, I was there at Haydock when he won. He's very impressive, very impressive. It's um, Warwick. I think he 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 looked. I think if he was with somebody else, if he's Irish trained, he'd be short of price. Um, so he he'd be the one for me for the two and a half. Yes, stay away phase. You know, a solid performer. Um, a class horse will come and beat him. I don't know if there's a class horse in the race. Yeah, I think. I think Factor File is going to scare a lot of them off. I think it's going to be quite a small field. Three places, Giovinco, 
if he ends up going there, he's going to obviously be cut in price. It's probably not a, not a bad each way bet, non runner no bet um, for anyone that's that's interested in Giovinco. Um, moving on to Ryanair and the stairs. Um, Ryanair at the top of the market is uh, El Fabiolo obviously won't go. Bambridge, uh, Envoy LN, Stage Star, Faster Slow won't go. Um, doesn't it looks like it's going to cut up massively? Um, there's one that's obviously got a lot of backing, Stage Star, um, Envoy LN. Michael, anything take your fancy? I think personally, I think it's one that I'm not too interested in. Yeah, it's. Um... I mean, obviously, from our point of view, hopefully that you know, if, if a hoist in your does turn up here, then like you say, the fact you, you, you describe the race very well, it, it is probably a much more open race because there's nothing in here that quite shouts out that that um, in, in the way perhaps some of the other grade ones or, or big races do here. Um, say, Star's a remarkable little horse, really, isn't he? He, he? he perhaps he doesn't get the uh, the, the real big headlines, but he, he keeps turning up at these. These big ones and performing when it when it really counts, doesn't he? Which probably just goes to show Paul Nichols' his skill as well. Uh, Envoy Allen, you know, he's, he's ten now as well. He's obviously had his uh, documented issues, but seems to be coming back to a little bit of form. Um, so, like I say, it, it's not a race particularly I have a, a strong strong view on. But like I say if, if the ground comes right and good, and um, Stage Star turns up in the form did last year, he's only eight, could still technically be going going the right way. So. Um, you know, obviously you've got to put a disappointing run um, behind him last time, but wouldn't be the first time Paul Nichols has done that and managed to turn around and uh, and get him back in tip top form when it when it really matters. Yeah, Ahoy Senor in there bet with bet three six five at twenty fives, fourteens with Sky Bet, fourteens with Paddy Power. I think twenty twenty five is quite a big price, obviously. <coughs> um I think the race suits him more than more than the gold cup probably. Um and I think if you look if you Obviously, there's been a lot in between, but if you do look at that gold cup, until he he kind of fell, he was traveling very nicely, leading from the front, jumping well. Um, I think it's in what's not a um, brilliant Ryanair. I think it's not a bad bad option at twenty five to one. Um, Stairs, obviously, Tupu Irish Point, uh, Crambo, the Noble Yates. I think Emmett Mullins wants to run him here for his national prep. Um, Sir Gerhard, Florin Porter, Gavin Cromwell says that this is probably likely over the National Hunt chase. Um, do you think it's it's Rob Kerr that take it with Tupu or Irish Point? Uh, uh, yes, for, for, yes. I mean, very probably well on what what we've seen so far. Um, you know, Crambo hasn't done Crambo hasn't done a lot um, wrong either, has he? Um, obviously, Noble Yates won a champ there the last time. So again, I suppose it's a uh, as the world hole often turns up, it, it's plenty you can probably give chances to, and and I think it will be a very exciting exciting race to watch. Um, but the way he's improved, I think again you you can't rule out. Maybe I'm being a little bit biased, hoping the English do better than uh, <laughs> than they probably will come the come the day. But um, yeah, I'd be taking a little chance that Crambo still still improving, still going the right way, and and, and perhaps can 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 give the favourite a run for his money. The Kind of fan favourites down there at 16s, 20s and 33s, Paisley Park, Sire de Burley and Dasho Drasher. The horses like this, are they, in your opinion, maybe just a bit past it on the decline? Do you think they'll have any any chance? If, if they were placed, it wouldn't be a, you know, wouldn't be a huge shock with it. They're wonderful horses that keep coming back time and time again. Um but like you say, realistically, you you'd like to think that there's there's better out there now. Just just like I say, on the age they are, they're probably not quite the horse as they were two or three years ago in terms of raw ability. But um, in terms of heart and toughness and everything, they are you know like I say, they're they're, they're wonderful, wonderful horses. But um, it probably is time now for a for a new champion to come through and uh, and take the crown. Stu, do you have any opinion? Yeah. Well, no, not really. No, yes. Hello, I'm speaking to you. Um, yeah, Tia Poo. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, if Fermo's horse is, is the one that can come along and improve, again, if he was Irish trained, he'd probably be short of price. Um, Noble Yates is very, very tough. Um, 
doesn't look in an outstanding stayers hurdle in my humble opinion. Um, does the French horse run? The lamb, I see. Is it priced up? Let me just take. No, it's not priced up. So, um, you know, I, I've just watched this race so so often. Like Sudabuli won it last year, didn't he? Um, not all that fancied. Um, he was thirty-three to one. And, yeah, you were talking about those older horses. I mean, beat Dashwood Dress at three quarters of length. You know, this isn't about speed. As these older these horses' stamina gets better, so um, as, as they get older, so I, I don't. You know, we haven't. We're not seeing a, a great renewal of this race um, unless Tiapu. I mean, he doesn't. Look, his form's not outstanding. I mean, it's he gets beat, so he, he must have a good chance, obviously. But um, I wouldn't be taking a very short price about something like Tiapu. That was. For you, is there, is there anything in the Ryanair stairs, or is there anything kind of Paul has, or or anyone like that that you think has half a chance? Um, so I think if it comes up nice, like good ground, I think Bambridge will win the Ryanair. Um, I think he he only goes, doesn't he, if it's good, good, soft. I think it's any any more testing than that, he doesn't even run. So. He, that one's a bit up in the air. I think Envoy Allen's po probably Henry's best chance of the week. Um, I was really impressed when he just got beat by Jerry Colom. Um, where was that? Down Royal, I think, the last day. Um, he goes well fresh, hasn't run since then. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I quite fancy him. I think he's won. He goes so well at Cheltenham, doesn't he, Envoy Allen? He's won the Bumper, the Ballymore and the Ryanair. Um, all before so um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he'd win but then again a, a similar agree with the other guys comments stage star I'd also quite fancy Phil Dore as an each way shot I think he's 10 to 1 I think he's crying for a step up in trip he was only four lengths behind El Fabiolo at Cork the last day which I thought was very good performance from him again goes here fresh hasn't run since beginning of December and I think he just might be a little sweeping the uh, the placings there so uh yeah, Envoy Allen and Fildor, I think, for me. And then the Stayers, I think if it comes up soft ground, Tia Poo wins. I think it, Irish soft ground horses are quite different to English soft ground horses. And I think it would need a hell of a lot of rain to come for it to be kind of perfect conditions for him. I think all his best form is on pretty, pretty bad ground, well, pretty testing ground. So, uh, I think it would be interesting as well to see where Irish Point goes. If Irish Point was in here, then I'd fancy Irish Point, especially if it was better ground. Um, but if Irish Point doesn't go, then I think Tia Poo obviously is the head of the market. But I do agree that Crambo, I think, is up and coming. And I would absolutely love to have to see him give Fer a Fergals his uh, first festival winner. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, Crambo has a lovely chance and you just hope that he has the class to beat a horse like like Tia Poo. I think he probably could if he's, he's at his best. I'm, I'm aware of time and we've just got two topics to cover. Um, I think there's only one man we can go to for this, the 100th edition of the Gold Cup, Sku. Open race. Um, yeah, Galloping to Sean, 11 to 10. He's beatable. Fair, fast or slow beat him. Um, the end of last season and the beginning of this. Um, he had the run of the race last time on Leopard's Town. I've done it myself from riding a horse called Celtic Shot. Went on the trial, jumped off, made all. Um, and uh, you get beat in the Gold Cup. I mean, obviously, he's... The horses that stand out for me, if I was good, you know, I think Corrick are in a big race. I think Hugh White are in a big race, and I think Long Press are in a big race. Because they're tough, and they'll be staying. Yeah, um... I'm a lot. I'm along the same lines. I think if if Gallopin turns up like he did at Christmas, I think he he just wins. Um, I do. I think Korak, as long as he's kind of there or thereabouts, turning for home a few lengths a few lengths off the pace, like he'll he'll run a massive race. He's done it twice before. Um, just three after, times. Three times, of course. Yeah, he's three from three at Cheltenham. <laughs> just pick, 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 picking them off down the home street. Oh, yes. <laughs> um. Anyone fancy gentleman's game? Um, Mouse Morris is it beat, obviously, Brave Man's game at Weatherby. Um, 
it's only had a couple of runs. It's, no, no, I think Shishkin will run. I think Shishkin will run quite a big race. It's just whether he can get around there error free. Um, Ella, what was what's your opinion on the race? Um, all over fast or slow. Um, as soon as he um, was second behind Gallup in the last day, um, I just thought that was a really good run. And I, I agree. I think if Gallup turns up, uh, you know, as he did at Christmas, I think he wins. But I, I really like fast or slow. Um, obviously, second in the Ultima last year, but um, has some good Cheltenham form. Um, he was second in the Coral in a Coral Cup um, in 2022. Um, I think you get a bit of you get a, a furlong or a furlong and a half more than you do in Ultima in this race. I think that will help him. Um, he's beaten Gallop and Deschamps twice. Um, he's lightly raced compared. I think Gallop had a few quite hard races. Um, he's only raced fast or slow. He's only raced twice this season. I think his jumping is phenomenal, and I think yeah, he could make up the margins on Gallopin from from the last day. I'm not saying he'd beat him, but. Um, I do really like him. And I also, not just because you guys are on the call, but I really think Corrick will run a huge race. I think others in the race will go, will be ridden to win. And if you guys are just sitting, sitting cute behind and turning to home, I think you could really pick up the pieces of everyone else who, who will fade and you stay all day. And I, I, I really think you're, you've got a big race in you. Michael? Another big race, you meant. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, uh, from a training me, perspective. Taking sorry, from a training perspective, kind of is he where you'd want to have him at this point? Better ask the work rider. Really, he's uh... he, he, he's, he's in fantastic form. Just um, I don't know why. I read the Chel all the Cheltenham horses went out today, and he's just he's a liability coming in. He's just fantastic. He's just and he just looks great himself. So a bit of sun on his back, and he's really cocky at the moment so yeah he look whether he's good enough i don't know but he's in the right place yeah i think with the news today of marine national and constitution hill i think having what looks like it could be a proper proper vintage gold cup um will hopefully make up for some some of the other races which are maybe not not what they used to be um we're now at eight o'clock so just five ten minutes um on handicappers or other festival fancies um if I've got one that I quite like is the Kim Bailey. Uh, he has Chianti Classico and he runs Trelon in the Ultima. He's very. He said that that anyone that likes Chianti Classico should maybe look at his other one, um, which is kind of bigger in the market. Michael, do you have any any handicappers or other? Fans? Uh, the handy, I like Ted Walsh's horse in the Potemps, um, and I think a few places I've been, they've been talking that up. So. Um, that would be one, and then perhaps the, the, is in the article the Henry de Rob head horse Clixos is it Clixos? Yeah, yeah. Um, they would be the only other two I'd have sort of views on that uh, we haven't mentioned. So um, I mean, obviously the attempt is always a ultra competitive handicap, and he's at three or four of them all sort of joint joint favourites at the moment. But yeah, there's plenty of talk for the Ted Walsh horse. So and my handicap bet of the week is in the Coral Cup, and it is called Doddy the Great at 8 to 1. Um, I think if my mate Morsey doesn't go in the Arco, I really fancy him for the Grand Annual. Um, I think he's a really consistent performer, goes well fresh again, hasn't run since Christmas. Uh, I think he was only a length behind Founder 50 the last day, and I'm all over Founder 50 for the Arkle now, especially Marine National is not running. So that was my big anti-post bet. So I was very pleased. Well, not very pleased, because obviously it would have been good race to have a Marine National in there. But um, yeah, I'm a big Founder 50 fan. Um, but yeah, sorry, my mate Mozzie, um, he's got good rate, graded grade one form, and I think he'll stand up well in, in, in that handicap. Also... Um, Theatre Man in the plate. He was second behind Ginny's Destiny at Cheltenham. Um, I think I heard a, I heard a statistic that apparently he was the fastest horse coming up the hill that day from a chaser on trials day. Um, and I think that turn of foot will will um, serve him really well in the plate. And he's got some really good uh, good form with nice horses like uh, Inch House and Brave Kingdom. And uh, yeah, he's my uh, pick in the plate. So there's two there. Yeah, I agree with you on, on Theatre Man. That's one I too can't post. I, I just think 
it's it all seemed very positive and and another one I've not d- delved into the form too much but Nicky Henderson seems to be quite nice on is um first street um mm. so for anyone that's that's kind of interested in that Nicky's obviously said a, a good bit about it so that's one to maybe uh look at but yeah I think I think that's that's all I scheduled it for seven to eight um I hope there was you were able to kind of get some insight and and there's a few names that you can jot down down from this and yeah good luck to everyone at Cheltenham and uh, thank you all for joining.